Pepper Spider back again in the kitchen. Yes, and today I'm very excited because I'm going to show you how to make homemade peppermint patties. Yes, it's actually a lot easier than you might think, and you really don't need a lot of ingredients either. Mm -mm, no, in fact, I made a batch just last night because I wanted to experiment and do a dry run first. Now, being of an inquiring mind, I thought to myself, self, why does it have to be peppermint? Why can't we do another flavor? So I did try that. Today we are going to be making peppermint patties though, rest assured. However, last night I was making up my, my batch of peppermint patties. I think they came out really, really great. And instead of using peppermint extract, I used orange extract and they came out so lovely. It sort of tastes like an orange creamsicle. Mm-hmm, yeah. And uh, they make a pretty good yield, actually. I made about 30 of them um, at that certain size. Um, yeah, it's really quite simple. All you need is uh, sweetened condensed milk, extract, you know, peppermint or otherwise. I was thinking initially about using raspberry flavoring, but the grocery store didn't have any, so I used orange extract instead and a little bit of food coloring, um, powdered sugar, chocolate chips, and some shortening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and we will go through the amount of the ingredients that you will need as we go on. So without further ado, let's get started. Okie dokie. So the first thing you're going to need is three quarters of a cup of sweetened condensed milk, mm -hmm. which I already have measured out. So get that into a nice sizable bowl and dump it all out. There we go. Put this off to the side. Okay, and then you are going to need to choose your flavoring. Now, when I did the orange extract, I used, it was one and a half teaspoons. Honestly, I think it could have used perhaps a little bit more. The flavoring, nice, subtle, not overbearing. Um, might have used just a little bit more though. However, with the peppermint extract, because from what I understand, it is some strong stuff, I'm gonna go with the recommendation that the recipe says, which is one and a half teaspoons. So let's do that. So that's half. And then one, and then one and a half. There we go. Very good. Okay. So from there, going to add some food coloring. Is it necessary? No, but I think it gives it a little bit more legitimacy when trying to place the flavor with the color. I mean, if you look at the vast majority of candies out on the market, there's usually a color that co corresponds to the flavor. When I did the orange, I did about five drops of yellow and five drops of red to create that orange. Again, it could have been a little bit more vibrant, but it had like a nice creamy look to it. So with our green, because I did five and five, I think I'm going to do perhaps a total of 10. It might not be a good idea, but hey, we're going with it. <laughs> so if I could just get this, this is not a screw top, this is a pop top, there we go. So we got one, whoa, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, now the color will be diluted quite a bit because we're gonna be adding a lot of powdered sugar to this mix. Yes, we are. In fact, we're going to be adding four cups of powdered sugar. 
Mm -hmm. And the trick is you want to go slow. You don't want to dump in the entire thing at once. No, it's, it's a process. Now, whether you're mixing it by hand or with a, an appliance, have at the, I warn you though, if you are doing it by hand, you need a little bit of muscle because this stuff gets really, really thick. Yeah, like Play-Doh thick. Okay, so we're going to start and just pop a little bit in. About maybe a third of a cup. There we go. And then I've got my, my trusty spurtle. And just start mixing, mixing. And at first, you're probably going to be thinking to yourself, okay, uh, we've got goo, <laughs> you know, um, but don't worry if you just keep mixing and mixing and mixing, this will thicken up before you know it. I mean, it's already looking like something out of the Ghostbusters movie. Um, but it, the color will get lighter and it will get thicker. Do not worry about that because ultimately you want it to get into the consistency of a firm dough that is not terribly sticky. Now, considering that this is, I, I want to say like 90% sugar, yeah, it will be somewhat sticky. However, um, you don't want it to stick to your hands readily. See, this is already just about mixed in with not a tremendous amount of effort. Don't worry, it gets harder. <laughs> okay, so then once that is pretty much homogenized and mixed and blended together nicely, you then add a little bit more of your powdered sugar. Not the whole thing. You want to go in increments. You want to go slow. And then you just keep mixing this in until it is completely blended. And yeah, I mean, that's really what this amounts to. You just keep blending, 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 mixing in more and more in gradual increments until you reach about four cups. And prior to that, it will start to come together as a dough, very much like Play-Doh. So this actually might be a fun project for the kids to get into. And they can take turns mixing this up and become enthralled with how it turned into a solid. But I mean, you're really saturating the sweetened condensed milk with the powdered sugar. And it's like magic, really. So we almost have one cup done. Just pop the rest in there. I like doing stuff by hand. I mean, yes, I've, I've used appliances and things for things before, but I don't know, there's something kind of gratifying about this. Also, when it becomes more of a, a dough consistency and you can actually pick it up um, and, and hold it, you can knead the sugar in. That's what I did. Um, and it worked out really quite well. So it has thickened up already pretty nicely. Now, obviously, I have a ways to go. I have about three more cups to add, but yeah, this is a good start. So as you can see, it has definitely thickened up some. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue adding my remaining three cups off camera, mixing, 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 and then I will show you what to do next. All right, so I will see you in a bit. Okay, quick update. I just mixed in my second cup, and as you can see, 
it has gotten really, really thick. It's still, of course, too runny still, but it has gotten a lot thicker and a lot more difficult to stir. <laughs> Almost makes me think of taffy, actually. Uh, sort of taffy that's been out in the sun for just a little bit too long, but we are getting there. I just wanted to give you the update as far as consistency goes, you know, in case if you were wondering. So, two more cups to go. Let's do it. Okay, so after the third cup, Oh my gosh, I'm going to I'm going to look like Schwarzenegger after I'm done making these. This is seriously thick. However, it is still quite sticky. So we still need to add more of our powdered sugar. We're down to the last cup, give or take. And so I'm going to start using my little handses in just a moment because it's literally doing something by hand. And at this point, I mean, it's pretty much a solid state, so we're gonna we're gonna go with it. And I'm going to remove because this this is really sticky, but it is firm enough where I can manipulate it. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> there we go. So get your hands right in there, make sure your hands are nice and clean, and just start kneading the dough, if you will, into the powdered sugar. Roll it around, knead it in there, and make it all nice and homogenous. And so what I like to do is after I've coated my ball, after I've coated my ball, I like to pick the whole thing up and work it and smoosh it. Like I said, this would be a really fun project in the kitchen with some kids. And I have a bit on the bottom here. There we go. So just squish it all together, mixing, mixing, mixing. And this is, I tell you, this is a lot easier than mixing with the spurtle, okay? And it smells awesome. It's not too overpowering, but it is still very sticky, of course. So roll it around some more. Coat it. And then work the sugar in a little bit more. And then once it starts to get a little sticky, add some more sugar. And you just keep doing this until you are done with your four cups. And this is exactly what I did last night when I first tried this recipe, although of course it was orange and it smelled citrusy. But yeah, this is exactly how it worked the previous time. And this actually, it feels awesome. In fact, I would say it feels better than Play-Doh. It's more like silly putty, like a, a soft silly putty, if you will. Very, very, very nice, especially after a long day of crocheting, which I've been doing. <laughs> and let's mix, mix a little bit more on top and just mix this in. And yes, you know what, I, I, something I didn't say, this is kind of messy. Anytime you are involved with powdered sugar, yes, be prepared for a bit of a mess because it loves to fly. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I don't quite think that you need a respirator working with it, but you know, it does fly around quite a bit. So be prepared for that. So as you can see, I mean, from where we, from where we were and where we started with, this is quite a difference as far as the, the texture and the consistency. It's like magic, really. 
It almost makes me think of when I was a kid and I made, I think it was called salt dough. And then you, you bake it for a really long time and it hardens up and you can make, you know, semi-permanent sculptures. You know, personally, I prefer Sculpey clay because it's completely, completely permanent. And you know, honestly, we are just about there. And then after all this, we then get to play a waiting game, actually, because we can't just make them. No, no, no. We have to wait for a bit before we do the next major step, the next major process. Let's add a little bit more. In fact, this is the, this is the last of the four cups. But yeah, after our dough is at the right consistency, I'm going to make small, approximately one inch balls of the dough, roll them out and then flatten them just a little bit, putting them on some parchment paper. And the waiting then begins because you really want them to sit out at room temperature for approximately two hours. Now you're probably thinking to, to yourself, why? Well, the reason why is because that way it lets them stiffen up a little bit, become exposed to the air, become a little less sticky and easier to cover in chocolate later, which will be the next major step. We'll get there. We will definitely get there. But for right now, just working in the remainder of my sugar for the most part. I mean, right now it's really pliable and it works very, very nicely. I mean, I'm essentially there. But the thing is, is that once the powdered sugar on the surface of my ball becomes absorbed, yeah, then the dough gets a little bit sticky, which is what I'm trying to avoid. So yeah, it's basically a waiting process of about two hours. After one hour, flip them, and then let them sit for another hour, and then you're gonna be ready for the dipping process, which I found was really quite easy, considering they're flat, uh, as opposed to the, the Oreo truffles that I did once before. Yeah, they didn't want to stay put on the fork when I was trying to cover them in chocolate. They were, they were a little disagreeable. These, these were much more obedient. So yeah, we are just about there. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, you know, I mean, I do have some powdered sugar. I mean, mostly it's literally stuck to the side of the bowl. You know, it's not really loose anymore. But at this point, what you're going to want to do is take a small ball not that big. I mean, of course, it depends on how big you want them. In fact, the ones that I made with the orange, I would have made them a little bit smaller because these are super, super sweet. So small ball, roll it, and then give it a slight, slight smoosh press and put it on some parchment paper and the waiting will begin. So I'm going to keep making all of these little guys, these cute little lumps of love. Here. <laughs> so I'm going to keep making them off camera. I just want to wash my hands. Hang on one moment. I don't like to fiddle with my camera controls with sticky hands. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make up the rest of these off camera and then the waiting shall begin. All right, well, for me, not for you. <laughs>
Alrighty, so I have all of my little patties made up. So let me see, I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I've got 38 because I made them a little bit smaller. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let them sit for an hour, then just simply flip them over to expose the bottom side to the air, wait for about another hour, and then, then we are going to do the chocolate. Okay, so I will see you when that happens. Okay. All right, so after much waiting, I finally have my patties. They're all ready. They are nice and and stiff, you know, not like rock hard, but they're they're stiff. They're not going to fall apart when we use the chocolate. And so I've got all of those ready. And so what I did was I melted three cups of chocolate chips. I used Giardelli 60% cacao, and these are really good. They're bittersweet chocolate chips. So three cups of those and about a tablespoon of shortening. Mixed that together uh, in the microwave, um, heated it up at 30 second increments until it is a nice, even, melted, lovely, silky texture. And now we get to drizzle. So I got my lovely chocolate here. Because these are flat, it will definitely help uh, as far as them not falling off of the fork. Another trick, if you add a little bit of chocolate to the fork first, it adds kind of a bit of an ad adhesive, if you will. So let's get ourselves situated here. Get on there. Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. And I am using parchment paper. Yes, I learned my lesson from previous experiments, believe you me. And just shimmy shake it just a little bit to get some excess chocolate off. And then Scoot it on down onto your parchment paper. Now, there will be excess running off better on parchment paper than on a wire rack, which is a real beast to clean. Parchment paper or waxed paper, that's definitely the way to go. And what I did do with my previous orange ones was after there was a sufficient amount of runoff. I transfer them to a fresh piece of paper so that when I took them off of the paper, they would have a cleaner edge to them. Is it absolutely crucial? No, but I thought, why not? And so I'm just gonna do not all of these on camera, mind you, but just do a couple of them. They look so good. Okay. A little shimmy shake. And then down on to the paper and there you go and you know what I'm gonna show you just how good they look give me one second so as you can see they have a really lovely sort of polished look about them you know granted don't don't mind the the edges there but uh, yeah they look really quite scrumptious so I'm gonna do the rest of these then I'm going to let them dry and harden and stiffen up and so forth. And then we will come back for the taste test. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. 
Alrighty, so the chocolate has hardened and they came out so beautiful. I'm so pleased with myself. Absolutely lovely. And I cut one open so that you can see the little inside. It's, it's, it's a lovely mint green. And this was, like I said, it was with 10 drops of food coloring, if I'm remembering correctly. Bon Appetit. Let's take a taste test. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I think it was a, a teaspoon and a half of the, the mint. It's perfect. It's not too invasive. It's not smack you upside the head obvious. It's subtle, yet it's obviously mint. The food coloring was a nice choice. And I love dark chocolate, so it's an overall win-win. Now, when you are making the size of these, like I said before, you might want to err on the side of smaller than bigger because these things are super, super sweet. They could put a hummingbird into a diabetic coma or make it spontaneously combust, either or. Mmm. really good, really simple, really quick and easy. It's no real baking involved. It's just mix some ingredients together and wait a bit, you know. So make some for yourself. Yeah. So listen, everybody, I hope that you liked today's video. If you did, please give a little thumbs up button down below. You know that I appreciate your appreciation and I love to spread the sweetness and you, you should spread the sweetness too. Yeah. Make some. I'm going to actually bring some of these to work tomorrow. A little surprise. And uh, so listen, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay cooking, and uh, stay, oh, yes, yeah, stay caffeinated. Don't forget about the caffeine. <laughs> and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.